So this morning we're going to talk about Ruby uh, and Ruby Mine specifically. This is where we're going to be spending all of our time this quarter. Uh, Ruby Mine is an integrated development environment that you can download from the internet. And I have li school license for you guys to use uh, so that you can, you can utilize this while you're a student. Uh, normally, I think it costs about 60 or $70, which is not bad. Um, so you, by now, you should have already installed Ruby on your home computers through that Windows installation. And I think we still have some Mac people I need to finish, <laughs> so Kristen. So we'll, uh, we'll get that fixed. Um, so when RubyMine starts up, we, everything is based on a project. So we're going to start a project and create a new project. Call it whatever you want, CIS 282 winter quarter for me. And I'm going to put it in my H drive. For you guys, you're going to have to use your flash drives for this and store it on your flash drive. And to do that, you click on the little three dots here, and it should come up with a, another drive letter for your flash drive, and you can start to store things there. Okay? Uh, the type of project we want is an empty project. Now, we will be using the same IDE throughout the three quarters of Ruby, and the last one being the rail. So, so you'll get very familiar with this integrated development environment, this IDE. So we just want an empty project for these kind of things that we're going to work on. And it creates a, uh, a little folder that it's going to be able to start storing uh, the text files. Now, Ruby, because it's an interpreted language, all it runs on are text files. Simple text uh, files. You could use any text editor you want, even Notepad, uh, Notepad++, Word. You could use Word if you wanted. It would be a real pain to do that. Um, and the integrated environment is divided up into these little panels. And here on the left is our project. And you can open up the project, and we're going to have more files under this folder. This folder now should be pointing to probably your flash drive and wherever you put it in your own directory structure. All right? So I want you to create everybody with me so far here. No. All right, the, uh, you might get this warning, it just went off, I missed it, uh, that says Ruby Gems not installed. You can just safely ignore those for now because um, we're not going to deal with any Ruby Gems. So once you have your project, if you right click on the folder and, and you can come down and say, I want a new, a new file. Okay, we just want a simple file and we're going to call it hello.rb. And we give it an extension of RB because the Ruby that I had you installed recognizes the RB extension as associated scripts for the Ruby interpreter. So it's a, it's a blank text file up here, and I can start typing my Ruby commands in here to make the, the computer do what I want. Now, unfortunately, you have to now forget almost everything you learned with the turtle stuff because I can't say turn right because it doesn't do anything. There's no turtle interface here, all right? So, but the, the loops and things that you did, the 10 dot times, that kind of stuff will still work. Okay, so this is the program. So we'll start out by uh, writing the, the standard. You have to have a hello world in every new language that you learn. Uh, it's, it's, st it's been around for 50 years or so. Uh, so in order to print using Ruby, there are two different commands that I can use that print strings, uh, data, text, to the screen for us. Okay? The, the most popular one is called puts. Puts is a method. And you notice that RubyMine knew that that was a, a value, I, I mean a, a method, and it tells us some information about the uh, uh, what arguments and things this takes. But Ruby, this is a method, just like the turn method and the uh, jump method in the tug -a turtle that's a method that takes arguments. So if I want to print out uh, hello world, I would type hello world. Now, 
in your Visual Basic, how did we distinguish uh, a string of text from commands in Visual Basic? Quotation marks, okay? So we're going to use double quotes for now, and we're going to type hello world. All right, so this defines a string. They call it a string in almost every language that I know of. Uh, anything in quotes is defined as a string. So it's, it's a single element that has a bunch of single characters assigned to it. Now, to run this, the first time I, have to, I run this, if I right-click on the text file, I can say run hello. All right, clicking on run hello, it runs that program down in here in what I call the console, and it tells me the output of that code. So it ran the hello world. Isn't that exciting? That's really exciting stuff. <laughs> All right. So once I've run it the, the, the first time, it changes this. It has a little pull-down menu up here of all the configurations, because I could have a bunch of different programs in RubyMine running. And from now on, all I have to do is hit the green arrow button, and it will run the program again. OK? So that's, uh, you'll, you're going to be doing that a lot. So I want you to add to this, add a new line. Now remember, most programming languages, we have one line of code per line, uh, one statement of Ruby code per line. We can have more, but uh, it's typically, it's better programming practice to have one per line. So I want you to add another line that prints out your name right underneath the hello world. Okay, what would we change for this program? All right, so to print out your name, we're going to use the same method, puts, and we're going to have a string of our name, so Dave Jones. So now when I run this again, I'm just going to click the green button, bang, and I got two lines outputted down here below. That's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not feeling the love here at all. I don't know what. It'll get, it'll get better. <coughs> all right, so... Notice that when I, when I ran the hello world, it, it put Dave Jones on another line. It put hello world on one line, and it put Dave Jones on another line. Okay, anybody know why it did that? Because it's two different uh, lines of code. That's part of it, but, right. So the puts method, by default, puts a carriage return at the end of this string and prints it to the, when it prints it to the console, it's adding this invisible character, which is a, a return key, okay? If I change that, when I said there are two methods for printing this, I can change uh, puts to the other version of output and use the word print. Now this is another method that takes a string as an argument. Now print, the difference is, and you'll see when I run it, it put hello world, did not put a carriage return, added the Dave Jones on that same line, and then put a carriage return. So the puts, no, it did not put a space. See that? Why is there not a space there? I didn't tell it to put a space there, right? Now, where would I put a space to make these come out uh, so that I can read them? After D or before the... After D? Oh, in the hello... Oh, okay. In the hello world, I could put it there, or I could put it there. But if I put it in both places, what's going to happen? I got two spaces, right? So I've got two spaces here. So... To define that, I, I put it one place or the other, and now my sentence comes out correctly. All right, any questions on that? Print does not print the carriage return at the end. Puts does add the carriage return at the end. All right? I know that seems simple. Maybe too simple for some of you, I don't know. 
we can also do math, and we'll just do a, a little bit of math. First of all, before we do this, don't type this in yet. Um, let's see. Uh, I think I might have asked you this last week. What is that value? If I were to just do this math, what is that value? 14. Who says 14? Who said something else? Like 20? <laughs> it should be about probably exactly something. All right, there are no parentheses. Okay, so who say 20? 24. Oh, we got three different three different things. Okay, so this goes back to probably second grade math in terms of what we call precedence. Okay, even in normal math, the multiplication and the division take precedence over the plus and the minus, addition, subtraction. So you always do the multiplication and division first, take the result of that, and, and do any addition or subtraction left to right. Okay? So this would actually be 3 times 4, which is 12, plus 2, which is 14. Right? <laughs> no, it, it does left to right except for the, uh, the values here. So I'm going to uh, just show that to you. Um, the problem is inside of here it's not going to work. I'm going to have to show you uh, something here in a second. So let's just show you that it is, in fact, 14. Um, before I show that to you, I want to show you another uh, tool that we use a lot uh, I call, uh, that's called IRB, which is uh, Interactive Ruby. And when I run the tool IRB, it shows up here in a window down below. And this is a way of just typing uh, Ruby code directly, and it will interpret each line as I type it. So if I just do 2 plus 3 times 4, it does the math in Ruby and comes back with the value, 14. All right? So... What would uh, what would this be? Four times three plus two. Fourteen still, right? So it does the multiplication first. It adds this, the other second. Um, and don't worry if you thought this was a different thing. I always get half the class with one number and half with the other. So, uh, so because of this. Uh, this, uh, what's the word, variability of, of way you're thinking about this, we can use parentheses in our code. And this makes it much clearer. Parentheses are just ways of grouping uh, mathematical expressions together. So now we know that parentheses are always done first, and the addition is done after that. So that, that would come out to be the same 14. All right. Now, this is a, a little weird. If I let, let me take this off. If I just try to uh, run this, I'm going to get an error. Oh, let's see. Now, when I open the IRB, notice it changed this configuration. So that's something very key. We want to go back to the hello and run the hello program. So it came back with 14. That's interesting. Because it could take, uh, we won't, we'll get into that later. Um, so I can do some math right here. Uh, one last thing before you go. Uh, how many, I want you to calculate how many seconds there are in a day using Ruby. So using the puts command here. Let the computer calculate it for you. Let's see what if that's true. Uh, he says it's 86,400 seconds per day. So to figure that out, we have to know <laughs> something about time, right? So how many seconds are there in a minute? 60. 60, okay, so 60 seconds. 
And if we multiply that by how many minutes there are in an hour, 60, times how many hours there are in a day, 24, we get 86,400. Very good. All right, that's enough for today. We'll continue on with this, uh, a lot of this tomorrow. Um,